It's the new attraction for people visiting New Delhi from across the country. This statue of a freedom fighter, Subhash Chandra Bose, was inaugurated a few days ago by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. It was installed at the same spot where a statue of King George V, the grandfather of Queen Elizabeth II, stood until the 1960s. Whenever I see this statue, I feel like that uh, proud to be an Indian, okay? He sacrificed himself at such a young age for the country. The statue of this great man should be put everywhere. Finally, people will know who these martyrs were. Subhash Chandra Bose is a controversial figure in modern Indian history. During India's freedom movement, he disagreed with the non-violent principles of Mahatma Gandhi for seeking independence and instead adopted a militarist approach. He sought the support of Japan, Italy and Nazi Germany to win over the British forces. By erecting his statue, Narendra Modi is reclaiming his contributions. For this BJP member of parliament, the Hindu nationalist prime minister is actually trying to add a new page to Indian history. Previously it was a tourist center, now it has become a nationalist pilgrimage for the people. Britishers have gone, but Britishism still remains in India. So here Prime Minister Modi has started a new independence movement. That independence movement is independence from the cultural domination, domination of European ideas, and this is a decolonization of the dreams. Ironically, the opening ceremony took place just hours before the news of Queen Elizabeth's death was announced in September. Modi renamed this avenue built by the British rulers and was originally called the King's Way to Kartavya Path, which means path of duty in Hindi. The symbol of slavery, the king's way, from today, has become a thing of the past. 75 years after independence, Narendra Modi is on a mission to get rid of the colonial mindset. A 2018 research paper concluded that Britain drained $45 trillion from India during their rule that lasted for two centuries. Economists say it was India's plunder that funded Britain's industrial revolution. For historian Irfan Habib, the government's call to decolonize India's past is just political opportunism. Colonization was something which uh, nobody can say it was, it was a... It was something beneficial to the colonized. Of course, it was exploitative. It, its purpose was exploitation. And it destroyed uh, countries and economies of all the colonized people, their lives. But actually, there is no decolonization mindset. Decolonization has happened much before. And he's just using decolonization as, a, as an instrument, as an instrument of control, uh, control of the people. More than renaming monuments, a part of Indian society wants an apology from the British for the atrocities they inflicted, like the Jallianwala Bagh massacre in Amritsar, north of India. In 1919, British troops opened fire on hundreds of unarmed Indians gathered for a peaceful protest. Officially, around 400 people died in the massacre. But according to locals, the actual figure could be four times higher. These monsters were firing from there, and that's where the bullets landed. One of the victims in the incident was Mahesh Behel's grandfather. When Queen Elizabeth came in 1997, we protested to ask for her apology. At least try to heal the wounds in our hearts. She didn't do anything. She came here, we protested with black flags and the police arrested us. With a new monarch, Charles III, can India expect an apology or any compensation from the colonial occupier? Shashi Tharoor, a Congress party MP, doubts any such possibility. However, a symbolic gesture of returning the Kohinoor, a 105-carat precious diamond, acquired for Queen Victoria, which Indians believe was actually stolen by the empire. The Kohinoor is particularly sensitive because it was on the, in the, on the, th the crown of the Queen Mother, which normally then becomes the crown of the Queen Consort. And uh, next May is the coronation of King Charles. 
And many in India are asking, will Queen Camilla wear that crown with the Indian Kohinoor there, which will be a reminder of theft, theft and appropriation. But the symbolism of having one major thing back is that it's a way of expiation. It's a way of saying, OK, sorry, that period is over. We, we should not have taken this from you. I don't really see that easily happening. Even, even the apology did not happen. Narendra Modi's decolonization mission is just the beginning. By the end of the year, the government intends to abolish 1,500 colonial-era laws, which they believe are archaic and obsolete. 